Let's turn now to today's business news. Stephen Carl joins us on set for that. Stephen, you've been looking at how the business community are reacting to the announcement of this renewed lockdown in France. Yeah, that's right. Business groups have been pushing hard before the announcement for more flexibility than we had in the last lockdown in the spring. Once again, though, all non-essential shops and businesses will have to close from midnight, just factories and construction sites able to continue working. This lockdown is also falling in the period running up to Christmas, where many retailers take in 30 to 40 percent of their annual revenues. That's led to warnings from a, of a wave of bankruptcies to come from France's biggest employers federation, MEDEF. Camille Nedelec has the story. It's a two-track lockdown that lets some businesses that had to close in March stay open now, such as this factory. In the spring, it's 120 machines laying idle and the company lost a quarter of its sales in the space of a few weeks. The factory was bouncing back. But this second lockdown puts a spanner in the works. The boss fears that orders will drop. Il y aura pas de nouvel investissement probablement sur 2021, au moins sur les six prochains mois. Quant aux embauches, aujourd'hui, la seule chose qu'on essaye de faire, parce qu'on est toujours en sous-activité, c'est de ne pas renouveler les gens qui partent. But for non-essential businesses that are forced to close, the new restrictions are even harder to bear. Restaurants, closed shops, florists and toy shops will all be shuttered. That's especially bad timing for this toy shop, which makes 30% of its sales in the run-up to Christmas. On a tout ce stock, il va falloir que je le paye avec un chiffre d'affaires qui va pas se faire. C'est ça l'angoisse. Ça, ça peut être à terme euh, déposer le bilan. Unions are calling on the government to provide more support to ailing firms, as the furlough scheme may cover salaries, but wages are just one cost among many. Décaler d'un an supplémentaire le remboursement du prêt garanti par l'État, c'est essentiel. Et puis traiter d'une façon définitive le problème des loyers pour ceux qui, bien évidemment, ne peuvent pas payer leur loyer. This year has seen record-breaking levels of debt among France's businesses, with 600,000 of them applying for government-backed loans. So what's the wider impact on the economy of this like lockdown then likely to be? So the last time around, the lockdown cost the French economy around 60 billion euros a month. The effects should be less severe this time around because factories and building sites can continue to work. Plus, other businesses have adapted to continue operating during the pandemic. There's also the chance that the rules could evolve. Emmanuel Macron promised a review in two weeks' time and the business groups are hoping that this will mean the chance that some shops will be allowed to reopen them. MEDEF, the Business of Federation, is estimating that there are losses of between 50 and 75 billion euros to the economy for the month of November. More businesses shut down will also cost the government more because they, there's going to be an increase in the cost of the supports provided by the government to those companies. Uh, it also risks plunging France back into a recession uh, in the last three months of the year. Well, news of that renewed lockdown, it sent markets tumbling on Wednesday. How are things looking today? There's a bit of a bounce back at the start of trading on the European markets today. Now, these markets were sharply down on Wednesday. Paris finished down over 3%, Frankfurt by 4%. So it's a very small bounce back, but nonetheless, uh, no continuing falls, at least at the start of trading today. Corporate results helping to boost some shares. More on that in a moment. First, let's take a look at what was happening in Asia earlier. We had some falls on the Asian markets. Partly because the region isn't seeing the same second wave of the virus that Europe is experiencing, so it's playing out slightly differently across the Asia-Pacific region. Japan's Nikkei finishing the day down a third of 1%. Now, Stephen, we're just hearing that a deal to sell jeweller Tiffany to French luxury giant LVMH is back on. Now, the two had originally agreed this deal last year that would value Tiffany's at over $16 billion. But then COVID-19 hit, it hit the company's sales hard and LVMH tried to back out of the deal, saying that the jeweller's board had made a series of bad decisions since. The two companies have now agreed to a slightly lower selling price, which would reduce the value of the deal by around $425 million, an agreement which will end a bitter legal dispute between the luxury firms. Air travel, as we know, slumped during the pandemic, but things are said to be looking up somewhat at the plane builder Airbus. Everything is relative when we talk about company results at this time of the year. Airbus says that it expects to stop burning through its cash reserves by the end of this year. That's despite reporting operating losses of 2.2 billion euros for the first nine months of 2020. Revenues in the last three months down by more than a quarter. Uh, 
Airbus has set aside 1.2 billion to cover its cost cutting plan. The company is in the middle of that executing that restructuring, which will see 15,000 jobs axed by next summer. Investors welcoming this news now shares in Airbus up by one and a half percent at the open in Paris. Finally, from you, Stephen, a major blow for people in Cuba as the money transfer service Western Union is closing its office on the island. So it's a move that will severely impact the flow of remittances from the Cuban diaspora. Uh, the closures were announced by uh, FINCIMEX, which is a military controlled entity which serves as Western Union's agent on the island. That's after a decision that was taken by the Trump administration to ban the transfer of money through firms that are associated with the Cuban military. Now, billions of dollars are sent through this service every year. Western Union says that it's looking for new ways to comply with the rules, but it's going to be a major impact. That's a huge part of Cuba's economy as well that's going to be cut off by shutting down Western Union. Okay, massive. Uh, Stephen Carroll with the Business News. Thanks indeed for that.